Welcome to this video, where I show you the radial planimeter that I built with a friend. It's called a radial planimeter because a planimeter is a device that finds the area of some shape. In this case, this squiggly line I drew on this piece of paper. And it's radial because it rotates around an axis. The way it works is, by tracing the perimeter of the shape you want to find the area of, you will move all of these mechanisms inside the device. And at the end, a dial on the device will tell you the area of the shape that you just traced. To read the result, what you do is you first zero the output dial so that the pointer matches the zero. Then as you trace the curve, this gear containing the dial will move sideways depending on how much area was traced. And the output can be read by looking at the position of the pointer compared to the readings. And the area is given in centimeters squared. This device is almost entirely 3D printed, and it's made up of these three devices stacked on top of one another. I 3D printed these smaller prototypes as a test, and also as a visual aid during explanation. The way this mechanism finds area is by using the equation for the area of a polar curve, which is the integral of 1 half r squared d theta, where theta is measured in radians. These three mechanisms, which are stacked on top of each other, essentially do the three parts of that equation. This mechanism finds the radius, this mechanism squares the radius, and this mechanism does the integration. Since we use this pointer to trace the curve that we want to find the area of, the radius at any point in time can be measured by the movement of this rack. And as this rack moves in and out, it turns this gear. In the final design, this gear then goes on to turn the next mechanism. But in this prototype, it's connected up to a rotary encoder and can be read by an Arduino. The next mechanism takes the rotation of this gear and transfers it to the rotation of this big disc. The groove is cut in such a way that the rotation of this disc represents the radius of this rack, but the position of this pin represents the radius squared. This also explains why at a constant rotation velocity, the pin appears to accelerate outwards. Lastly, on the final device, the pin on the squaring mechanism is physically connected to the pin on the mechanical integrator. This means the input of the integration is R squared. The way that this mechanical integrator works is that this pin controls the position of the sphere. Since the entire top half of the mechanism is rotating, the ball rotates against the bottom disc, and that rotates this barrel, which in turn drives the final output. I've only given a very brief overview of these three mechanisms. If you want to find out more about the squaring mechanism or the mechanical integrator, you can have a look at the videos I've linked in the description. The last thing I want to do in this video is show how the three parts of the mechanism stack together. You can see as I move the pointer in and out, it turns this groove, which is the groove of the squaring mechanism. Turning the device over, this groove then drives the pin of the mechanical integrator. This pin then holds the two spheres of the mechanical integrator in place as it rolls against the bottom disc. And since the entire top assembly turns, these balls roll against the bottom disc, which then roll against this barrel, which then turn this gear that is attached to the final output pointer. Or at least that would be the case if the mechanism actually works. That's right, this mechanism doesn't actually at work. It doesn't actually show the area of a curve when you trace it. And that's because the one big problem my friend and I had throughout the design process is trying to get the balls to have enough friction to grip against the bottom surface and also against the barrel. You might just be able to see that in reality, when I turn the top half of the mechanism, the balls do rotate, but the barrel doesn't rotate with the balls. This means that the output dial and the pointer don't move at all. So this physical device doesn't actually work, but in theory it should, because all my calculations work out. That's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching.